Hey guys, it's Ann. Welcome to the channel. Um, today we're going to take a look in on my vermi tea. I put up a posting on my channel and basically everyone had said that they want to know exactly the Nat's details of how I make it and then they also wanted to see what has it done for me. So, I am here in front of my gargantuan grape spread. This is actually only four plants. I wanted to go ahead and show it to you before I gave it its clipping for the fall. So here's an example of what one grape leaf looks like um, where it has been eaten by a Japanese beetle. And then here is one that has not been touched. And this is what this is a, just a little bit of nibbling. This leaf would have survived if I wouldn't have picked it and it would have been just fine to photosynthesize. But this one, um, you can tell the Japanese beetles did nothing. And this is what the vermi tea did. Basically, what happens is that I uh, started spraying this about three years ago. And after the first year, I was just doing it for the fuller feed to try and boost the plant. But then I noticed that the Japanese beetles weren't bothering it hardly at all. I mean, this, this is pretty mild. If you have Japanese beetles in your area, this kind of damage is very mild. I mean, the one year before I started using the vermi tea, this whole thing was just naked. Absolutely, um, there weren't any leaves left on it. And um, the first year that I sprayed, I thought, well, we'll get some good fertilizer in here. Um, and uh, I actually, had used chemical fertilizers in the past, but uh, you know, once it rains, then they're done, right? And even after it rains, the leaves continue to look like this. So that is the uh, first thing that I wanted to show you that the vermi tea has done for me. Okay, so here we are at the bonsai bench. Uh, this is an elm that I'm letting grow so that it can get thicker, so it, it looks more like a weed than it does a tree right now. So that one's not super awesome, but put this in front. That is a jasmine, and it generally gets a, a problem with scale every year and we've been doing the drenches with it and with all the other bonsais and I have yet to see any scale on them. This is my oldest bonsai. It is a juniper and I also, um, it flowered for the first time and actually got little uh, juniper cones on it this time for the first time ever. So the vermi tea and the vermi drench has been taking care of it nicely. I also don't see any pests on this. This is one of the tiger bark ficuses and it is also known for its scale problems and even though you see little white dots there that's the bark and that is not any sort of scale pest and it is doing lovely. And although it's not a bonsai, it is out here with my succulents, and sometimes succulents have a hard time when they're outside. This tends to get some kind of mites or spider mites or something. And uh, so my ponytail palm is doing lovely as well. Okay, shooting into the sun here so it doesn't look real great, so sorry for that. But these are my avocados that I've been growing. This one back here has been growing for about five years. And then you can just tell by the difference in size that some of them um, are even as new as this year. Okay, so here we are on the other side. And I'm going to hurry up before the lawnmower gets here. But I've got my maple forest. I've got my grapes. I have my Fukian tea, which is that thing that's completely grown out of its profile over there. But that's, that's bonsai for you. You have to let them do that every once in a while or otherwise they don't progress. This is, wait, they're fighting with each other. Okay. The grape bonsai is very vigorous, but this is another one of my jasmines. And I don't have any problems with scale this year. So the, the worm drench has been doing fabulous. All right, so that is my story of what has the worm tea done for me lately? Now let's go take a look and I'll take you through the procedure to make the worm tea. Okay, first things first. 
for worm tea, you are going to need some worm castings. And uh, the, these were just harvested and put over here. I'm not going to screen these because I'm just going to put them right back in. But this bag holds a little over a pound and I'm using a five gallon bucket of water. And I do have these little bags which are completely biodegradable. In fact, they're so biodegradable, you don't have a choice. If you leave this wet for 24 to 48 hours, it will completely disintegrate. So, um, that is after you make your worm tea. So after you take it out of the water, um, plan on throwing it in the compost pile or back in with your worms, because it is going to decompose ASAP. All right, step two. Put, okay, I just made a mess, but, Put the bag of castings into the water that is uh, either rainwater or tap water that's been allowed to rest. And it is going to sit there and bubble for about 24 hours. From what I understand, 24 to 48 hours is maximum, anything more than that. And for some reason, I guess it loses its, uh, its kick. All right, next on the list is my amendments that I put in for the supercharged for the fuller feeding. So I have a little shot glass here and I'm going to do 30 milliliters, which is about an ounce and a quarter. Yeah, ounce and a quarter of the uh, or kelp meal. Although I do get a commission off of Amazon, I'm not sponsored by them, but this is my favorite. And then, same story, CalMag. Uh, this is your nutrients that you need for calcium. Even though it seems like many people have more than enough of this in your soil, it's not available to the plants. So that's 10 milliliters or half an ounce of CalMag. And that is to make some uh, calcium and magnesium immediately available. Now, if you were just going to do this straight off, you might want to get some uh, fish conditioner um, just to get rid of the chlorine. But, you know, if you don't have that problem, you don't need it. So next off, I've got, and since this is dry, I'm not going to put it into the little wet shot glass thing there. But this is some of my alfalfa meal. And right now what we're doing is we're just building the micronutrients into the fuller feed. And then we're going to do the same thing with the azomite. We're going to put that in. And then we're going to let this bubble for 24 hours. That's my preferred is 24 hours. I'm going to mix that up probably every couple of hours. Even though the bubbler's bubbling, I don't think that's enough to get all the goodness out of the worm casting. So I'm going to go in and squish it. and kind of make sure that it is completely, you know, turning into tea, like you would want it to. So, and if there are any worms in here, being that this is oxygenated water, they will be totally fine. I'm just gonna use a regular old watering can, so I don't have to worry about clogging up any sort of a sprayer, but if you do plan on using like a powered sprayer or anything, you're gonna wanna Filter this probably through another one of these bags or something to get rid of the chunks that may be there from the azomite and uh, the worm castings because right now my bag seems to have come untied a little bit, but I'm not going to need to do that. But if you do need to filter it to keep your, your sprayer in good condition, then by all means uh, filter it later. It's not going to hurt anything. So, oop, all right, might as well not have put it in the bag at that point. Dang it. All right, so that is going to keep going for 24 to 48 hours, and then we are going to drench the plants. So hang on. Okay, so now we are going to get ready to drench the pepper plants. Now I've got my bucket that has been bubbling for 24 hours, and I have got my watering can that is three quarters full of just ye old water. And then I am going to get the rest of it full. Okay, so you can see that the finished tea is not quite chocolate milk, but it's somewhere between coffee and chocolate milk. We're going to pull that up the rest of the way before we do the drench on the plants so that it is diluted 
If this was regular worm tea, I really probably wouldn't worry about doing any sort of dilution, but being that I did add the extra micronutrients, I, you know, feel safer uh, diluting it, you know, one part of the worm tea to three parts water. And the goal here is to get everything covered. So you're giving them a shower. Now, like I said, this can cause flower drop, but I've already had a huge, huge crop this year. So if I lose my flowers, I will be totally fine to uh, wait for the next couple of weeks for the next flowers to come out. So I'm just gonna keep doing all of this, make sure that I, I get it all running down the stem of the plant, both sides of the leaves, and then they will, hopefully have their really good nutrients, which will prevent this. So I don't know if this is chlorosis or if this is some sort of critter, being that there's a little, couple little dots in here. I'm leaning towards critter, but uh, hopefully the worm tea will protect my plants against that. Now we're gonna move over to the tomatoes, which I'm hoping will get all the way into October with the help of my worm tea. We have got everything drenched and I'm going to do this about every two weeks this fall in hopes of keeping my tomato plants and pepper plants healthy all the way into the frost. Now I have, you know, put your thoughts in there, but I have also purchased a birdies bin, a raised bed. Um, I went and built this really great concrete one, but um, I'm really not in the shape to do it again. I think I hurt my back for like two weeks after I did this, so I'm going to get raised bins. If you want to see me put together the birdies bin that will be similar in size to this, let me know. I'm not affiliated, I don't have a link or anything yet, maybe in the future, but uh, I'm going to replace my pallet bin behind this one. All right, well, it, it appears that the uh, filming in the noon sun was too much for the GoPro and it quit. Uh, so the final thing of what I wanted to tell you was that uh, do you want to see me put together a birdie spin? Um, bought it a while back, was waiting for my root crops to die off or get harvested, and so there we are. It's getting to be that time of year. P.S. If, uh, if you water your weeds with the worm tea, uh, they also get super healthy and super big. So, anyway, if you have enjoyed this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that sub subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.